a few months ago, I made an interview to one of TVs, and uh, it was a topic how to get to the best colleges and uh, what requirements and what you're supposed to do. It was on TV. And many people calling after this interview to management, and they ask you for verification and for help. Probably, talk to your parents, probably we will have this opportunity because when we prepare you for SAT, SAT is one of important part to get to colleges, but we have different criteria, right? In this interview, I mentioned seven criteria. Plus, when you go to colleges, uh, many of you have no idea that colleges, even they're not cheap at all, right? If you have nice um, parameter for this criteria, you can get a lot of money back. Let's say some colleges, they have uh, payment is, I just made up some number, 60,000. You can get 25,000 back from this college. Because they're looking for smart and nice kids, right? Yes. So we are planning to open this kind of service in our company. If you and your parents are interested, call to management and uh, we'll clarify, we discuss about opportunity to open this college because my point you overpay a lot. If you know this, like remember this video many years ago one of our students he got about scholarship about uh 500 scholarship overall right overall even more right now because i don't have just feedback to data so i'm not talking about this amount but definitely you can get help for your parents if you oh, not randomly said, I want to go to this or this, right? MIT period, nothing else. According to my experience, when I came here, I uh, I have taught in MIT, I was in my, invited in MIT. And my point that many of you overpaying for these colleges a lot. For instance, some colleges, they is not so prestigious like MIT, but specific profession in this college is pretty good. I give example, maybe nobody knows about this. I give example, not not the best college at all, for instance, Longan University, right here in the Calp. Guess what? Our college is not top rated college, but pharmaceutical department, they have Nobel Prize who worked for them, uh, they had a while ago. I don't know right now, but it was a while ago. And they provided nice education pharmaceutical, right, in this case. So some colleges, they very oriented to specific profession and these people who get education this college. Company knows the level of these colleges, they independent in demand. So again, discuss with your parents everything. Probably we open this to help you to uh, save money in this not easy time, okay? Because if they have 50 side, not necessarily or 70,000 or Columbia 75, for instance, so MIT 80, I just, I, I just made up some numbers. So some of these colleges, they also very, uh, very good. And you can get a lot of money from this college, like different merits, right? From this, keep in mind. Well, now let's go through these questions. I'm gonna go first of all through most request questions. After that, if you have any questions, you can go back to any of this. Based on this, please, what I have. Let me see. The first is number five. 
Okay. Ну, проверь, пожалуйста, чтобы все были uh, unmuted. And Kirill, you have some application back. Uh, not my application. Check it. You don't have any exclamation point next to your name. Kirill. Yes. You have some. Oh, now it's fine. No application oh. back of this for during this lecture. It's just uh it's just the Adobe Reader that's open in this. Adobe Reader download to your computer. Exactly, so I have nothing else open. Now it's open. Yeah, it was just the Adobe Reader and uh, the web webinar. Adobe Reader, when I ask your name, now it disappeared. So you had something else. See? So I'm not made up. So I have triangle, exclamation point, something wrong. Okay, Adriel, number five. Read it, please. All right. Um, if one triangle has two sides that have lengths of three and seven, which of the following cannot be the length of the third side of the triangle? Okay, thank you. Very typical question. This is for three five. Make a picture of any scaling triangle, so all sides different. And let's say this ABC. And given what this is, let's say seven, and this is three, not to scale. Which the following cannot be the length of this side. You know two properties when a triangle can exist. One property. If you have any triangle, I give a general case. A, B, and X. Any side is less than total two sides and any side of triangle is greater than difference of two sides it's very logical pretend this is your home this is father academy and this africa palm tree here if you go straight to farber academy it's shorter than go to africa and after that by so any side eleven, check it. Condition number one. X supposed to be uh, less than seven plus three, which is ten. And X supposed to be greater than seven minus three, which is four. If you combine and depict the number line, four is not included. Ten is not included. This is ten. I make calls over there. And this is X. Less than this and greater than this. Okay. But since question is negation, which of the following could not be the third side? And multiple choice 10. And 10 is excluded. So the answer is 10. Can I have 11? No. Can I have 3? No. So these two conditions, without thinking, just add and two and subtract two numbers. Okay, so far so good. Very typical question for mini test. If you have any question, ask me. Number six, Leah. Number six, in the figure above, M1 is parallel to M2 and M3 is perpendicular to M1. What is the value of X in degrees? Thank you. And this is how many degrees? This is X, two small letters. And this is, if you continue this one, this is 40 degrees given. And this perpendicular, you have to find X. Well, if this is 40, this is 40. Why? Because the vertical angles, vertical angles are the same. In this right triangle, 
these two angles complementary. So this plus this equals to 90. So this angle equals to 50. And you can check 50 plus 40 plus 90 equals to 180 degrees. So pass a good. Any questions? Who understand up to this point everything? Okay. Mark, why are you not participating? When I ask you who, you must participate immediately. Okay, believe it or not, but these two questions ask four and four students. They're not tricky question at all. Number next is number sixteen. Number sixteen, Samuel, please. Sixteen. Theodore, number 16, please. If the sum of 10 integers is odd, at most, how many of these integers could be odd? Thank you. You know, if you add two odd, you will get even, right? For instance, 3 plus 5 is 8, which is even. If you add two even, you get even. 2 plus 4. If you get even and odd, you will get odd. And this uh, 316 sum of 10 integer is odd. If you have 10 integers odd, the sum is odd. The sum. Okay. You know, if you have even number of odds, it's always even. So you have to take odd number of nodes maximum. If you have nine odd, you add them up. They're not balanced. You get odd. The sum is odd. And plus even. You will get odd. So the answer is nine odd. They supposed not be balanced. So far so good. Any questions? Okay, Daniela, number fifteen. Somebody ask me. Okay, let me fifteen. Fifteen, three fifteen. Daniela. Excuse me, you're not listening? Diana, 15, please. Among, among the 10 colleges Michelle applied to for are her top schools. How many admissions would Michelle have to receive to guarantee that she can get into at least one of her top schools? Thank you. Then what do you think? What topic is it? Probability. What, what thing is probability? Raise your hand. Okay, put your hands down. Who thinks this is another topic? Kirill? What topic is it? You really have sure, I don't think that it's probability, maybe. I like this statement. I don't think this probability may be, right? Two kind of probability in the answer, probably, right? Who knows what topic is it, students? Theodore. Nobody knows. We did with you in fourth and fifth grade, Mark Twain prep. 
this is not probability what is a uh, what is a hint this not probability what key word is hint for you look at this to guarantee what is guarantee guarantee is 100% is 90% guarantee no guarantee is like must like has to this model verbs like must 100% of certainty is the same like guarantee probability give you pro, uh, give you chances 100% only 100% can guarantee but this is not probability this is Dirichlet theorem or sometimes for kids we name pigeonhole pin principle according to this theorem we always consider worst case scenario and uh, i just remind you this if you don't know what tools you to use how you solve this problem you worry about this Dirichlet. theorem So if you have according to this Dirichlet theorem, if you have n pigeonholes and n plus one pigeons, and you want to play this n plus one pigeons. And this pigeon holes, and you go to place all of them in this pigeon holes. You will find at least one pigeon hole. We have more than one pigeon. Straightforward, right? We use this principle a lot for uh, Mass Olympics for proof. How to apply this formula? Or how to apply this approach? They said, look at this. What we have. They said uh, 10 colleges given. 10 colleges. And uh, she will apply for to four top schools. Among of this, four top school I make this one right okay so what we know is then we have two pigeon holes to make it nice this kind of top schools and this is not top. And we have 10 colleges. So worst case scenario. The worst case scenario, you're getting opposite what you need. You need to get to top school and you got uh, not top school. So the first time, you choose no top, no top. If for top, how many no top we have so far? 10 minus four, which is six, right? No top and four top. And every time in some book, they uh, even wrote, imagine you loser, just for solving this problem. Every time you get opposite what you need. And every time you get not, 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 not not and we have six not right when it out of six not the next would be what half percent top because when we out of not next is top school how many attempts did you make six plus one seven if you take seven attempt one of them would be five percent guaranteed top school and the kind of scene is Dirichlet theorem or pigeonhole principle. To understand this hundred percent, this kind of question, hundred. 
just consider worst case scenario. Every time you're getting opposite, right? This theorem was proven by a great Belgian mathematician in 19th century. And still many books related to this uh, great theorem. Can I raise everything? His name has like, in Belgium the time, they have like seven names. And he has the first name Gustav, and five more names, and after that, Dirichlet. Okay, Dirichlet, last name. It was 16, 18, 18. 19. Kirill, read this question, please. You said 19? 18. 18. No, 18. There are four points A, B, C, D, and E on line L, and another four points W, X, Y, and Z on a different line parallel to line L. How many distinct lines can be drawn that include exactly two of these nine points? Okay, excellent. Thank you for reading. I have a question for everybody. Did you find any mistake in this problem? Who found any mistake in this problem number 18? Raise your hand. Tell me, what kind of mistake did you find? It says nine points when there's eight. Yeah, because they said there are five points, A, B, C, D, E. But this is not five, this is four. Uh, this is not four, five points. So make a picture. Pretend I have uh, five points. Then I'm in A, B, C, D, and E, right? And E. And for some for explanation, I use another line and they name it. W, X, Y, Z. W points X, Y, and Z. And the question is, how many distinct, not the same lines, can be drawn that include exactly two of these nine points? Exactly two. So one, two, three, four, right? And for each of these, from point A, I have four lines. From point B, I have four lines. From C, I have four lines the same way. D four lines and E four lines. So how many lines I have overall? Four times five, which is one. Mm -hmm. So far so good, it was 18. Next is 19, 19, Adriel, your question. All right. Uh, in the figure below, the, the figure below shows triangle ABC and its exterior angle DAC. What is the value of A? Thank you. So geometry, first of all, the picture. And this is D, H, This is the A, this is H. This is C. And this is B. And there is to find A. Look at this, what we have, students. This angle D, A, C, exterior. And this angle equals 3A plus A, 
40. Equals to 40. In addition, they provided some numbers here. Let me be sure this is 30. And this is one or two. Okay. And you know property of exterior angle. Any exterior angle for A equals total of two remote angles not adjacent to this. So this equals 30 plus one or two, which is 132. And divide by four both parts. 33 degrees. Okay, property of exterior angle. Okay, so far so good. Okay. Okay, try to find fix the new one. Try to fix. Well, uh, this is the fastest way. Can we solve this problem without exterior angle theorem? So any problem you can solve a few different ways. For instance, look at this, without this. If this is for A, this one would be the supplementary, right? This angle would be 180 minus 4A. After that, 180 minus 4A, plus 30, and plus 102 equals to 180. From this equation, from the equation, find A. This is a little bit faster. And as a TV fighting for seconds. Okay, this is was number 19. I probably explain, not probably, I explain most of the class question from number section number three. Okay, now we're gonna go to section number four. Again, any questions if you need to go back? Ask me. Okay, what did you ask in number section four? Six and seven. Six and seven. Somebody read this question six and seven. Who did not read today? Problem arc. Mark six seven. Okay. The Doppler effect is a change in frequency of a wave while its source is moving. The Doppler effect formulas shown below are used to calculate the frequency of sound as a result of relative motion between the source and the observer. If the source is moving toward an observer at rest, the change of observed frequency can be calculated by the formula. Uh, if the observer is moving towards the sound and the source moving closer to the observer, the change of the frequency can be calculated by the equation below. Uh, the stand so standing on the sidewalk, you observe an ambulance moving towards you. As the ambulance is as the ambulance passes by with its siren blaring, you hear the pitch of the siren change. If the ambulance is approaching at the speed of 50 miles an hour and the siren's pitch sounds at a frequency of 340 hertz, what is the observed frequency in hertz? Assume that the speed of sound in air is 760 miles per hour. Thank you. This is uh, many questions on city based on the idea that you can implement uh, this written problem. And so for good idea if you, uh, if you understand what it's about. Who knows where Doppler effect used not only in SAT? Give me an example where we use Doppler effect. Anybody? You think all these uh, discoveries were made for your SAT test, students? This is part of our life, part of uh, science. And they give you formula. F for 
six and four seven. Let me just give example. Um, F observer. I just override this formula. E equals to F original. V sound divided by V of sound and minus V of source. This formula. For instance, in uh, six, what is given number six? In number six, staying on the side walk. So V absorber, okay, what we have here, okay, equals to zero. Because he is standing equals to zero v of source equals to 15 pH and uh, 340 frequency 340 F original three fourteen and the mega in hertz. Okay. And um, speed of sound view of sound equals to what? You know, okay, it's 760. 760 miles per hour. Just plug in everything here. What you're supposed to do. This is 340. This is 760. This is 760. And source moving is with rate of fifty. When you count, so all these ideas and uh, how you apply this formula, the behind the scene is tremendously interesting effect. Um, this effect was uh, discovered and described by uh, Christian Anders Doppler, a great scientist who. Uh, made the discovery based on simple observation. Pretend you're standing here. This is you. And uh, nowadays, let's say car approaching to you. Like in this case, they said not car, it was what is it? Ambulance, some car, okay. And when car approaching to you, it has frequency of the sound. Pretend this is a sign of frequency. It moving toward this direction. And after that, after car line up with you, it continue moving to this direction and have the same the same sound of his siren. But in this case, when it's approaching to you, this waves compressed. Okay. And instead of this, you will see this is compressed, right? Because it goes this way. When it goes this way, this wave expanded. 
and you have different pitch. And this observation is extremely helpful in science and in medicine, in astronomy, for instance, in medicine. How to find how fast uh, moving your blood and vessel? Easy. But then this is a vessel, and they have Doppler effect somewhere. They generate a sound, ultrasound, same device. And here we measure this device, right? And uh, they measure when sound moving this direction through this blood. Speed of sound adding together with speed of blood because blood goes this way. It approaches into this signal, and after that, it goes. This is stretching. And based, if you measure all these parameter of signals, you can easily find speed of blood. If you have some pathology, speed of light of blood is different, or pretend this vessel is clogged, right? So according to Bernoulli effect, speed would be different. Or one more, have you, uh, have you read this book of uh, Hawkins, right, about our universe? How we found that our universe is expanding the same way. When you start the spectrum of uh, light from this different planet or galaxies, you see they moving in uh, different directions. So they show that distance go to a red spectrum. It means the galaxy moving, expanding from point where you measure this. So everywhere we use a Doppler effect. And the idea is very simple. Sometimes you're waiting for car and you see this approaching or motorcycle. And you see the sound like, like this, right? This is the idea of Doppler effect. Think deeper in SAT because SAT connected with real life. Okay, and he did a great job. Christian Doppler. Next is question related to 17. What is 17? Uh -huh. 17, 417. 417, uh, Samuel, please. You have something wrong with your computer today, Samuel? You have this question. Oh, you lost connections. Muted. Oh, let me unmute you. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. What about now? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Each oh, okay. term in a sequence of numbers except for the first term is two less than the square root of the previous term. If the third term of the sequence is one, what is the first term? Thank you. It's just one problem. And what we know in 417. So let's say the first is x, the first term. And second, Look, look at this. Each term expect of the first is two less than square root of previous. So it's supposed to be square root of previous and two less. Based on this uh, algorithm, you can easily get the third one. The third is supposed to be square root of previous. Close radical a minus two. Okay, I just formalized words, and now they said this is equals to what? Equals to the third term equals to one, and they ask you find x. Well, this is irrational equation, simple irrational equation. Actually, behind the scene, you have to find domain. So under radical cannot be uh, cannot be negative, so x must be positive. 
for sure, or equals to zero, but not negative. And solve this plus two and plus two. What we're doing, we're trying to isolate radicals. Cancel out equals to three. After that, inverse operation for square root is second power, and I get square root of x minus two equals to nine. Again, isolate radical. You get square root of x, cancel out equals 11. Put both part to second part time, uh, to second power like we did right now. And you get x equals to 121. Okay, directional equations. So far, so good. 417. To understand up to this point, everything. What about Mark, Nikita B, David R? If you're not raising hand, it means you're not listening. David R, Mark, Nikita. Two seconds to raise hand. Well, the next question is. The next question is uh, 418. Uh, Samuel, would you like to read 418 as well? Uh, on the number line above, A, B, C, D, and E are coordinate points. Which of the following is closest in value to the absolute value of A minus 2 times C? Thank you. This was for 18. Let me make a picture first. We have a number line. And this is negative 2 and this is A. After that, 1, 2. This is B. 1, 1 tick is C. The next, I believe, this is zero. Next one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me check again. One, two, three, four, five. And this is E. And this is uh, two. I just write down what is given. Okay. And this is one, two. I believe this is D. D, if I did correctly. Very careful, make a picture. If you picture wrong, everything is wrong. Okay. A, B, C, D, coordinate E, coordinate points. And they ask you to find absolute value right here. Absolute value, fine, of a minus two times uh, c. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, good. Let's go first of all. We have to calibrate somehow, right? And it's the same like in, in your lab, you work in your lab, you get new device and you have scale, nice scale. You have to calibrate, you have to know how much is one tick of this, how to do this, easy. Since it's uh, all distances equidistant, the same. You can find uh, distance, uh, let me put it F here. AF equals 2 minus negative 2, which is 4. This in between two points. After that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
I want to find one interval. One interval equals all this length is four. I divide by uh, eight intervals. I got one over two or point five. Excellent. So I know where value of each of these. If you know each of these, I can easily tell that say if this is 0.5, look in this picture, right? Okay, and they ask you to find C. Mm -hmm. To find C. If this is zero, you go to the left, and this is supposed to be negative 0.5. You want to find B, I subtract 0.5 again. Okay. Now I know that C equals to negative 0.5 and A equals to negative 2. So I easily plug in here, which is negative 2 minus 2 absolute value. Uh, times negative 0.5 close absolute value and this is plus one minus minus plus one negative two plus one is negative one and absolute value of negative one equals to one calibrating must in calculus, when you have calibration, this is a little bit more challenging because sometimes they give you, not sometimes, they give you some shape, either cone or sphere, and this all distance is not the same. But here, just divide by, by eight. What does that is half percent? 100. Okay, good, good, good. It was 18. Again, I go through most request questions. 19, Tedor, read please for 19. In the figure below, the two circles are tangent at point P and OQ equals 12. If the area of the circle with center O is nine times the area of the circle with center Q, what is the length of OP? Okay, thank you. This is was for 19. Let me make a picture. You have a bigger circle and you have a smaller circle. Pretend this circle. And let's say this is O. And this O1. And this uh, radius one and this radius two. They touching here. And O Q is not O1, this Q. And O Q equals to 12 given. And uh, the tangent at point P, this is point P. Point of tangency. Area of circle area one to area two equals to nine to one. They said, well, why? They, you see what they do here? They hide this nine. We know so SAT, any numbers hidden in words just make it nine times. Nine is nine. You can solve it a few different ways. And what is it? What the length of OP? OP. OP is a question mark. You can do it uh, the fastest way, probably use the theorem. If two shapes are similar and they similar, all circles are similar, then a ratio of their areas. equals square of linear ratios. And this equals to nine over one. 
Again, if two shapes are similar, we did the torus of time in SAT. Then ratio of the areas equals to square of linear ratios. Taking square root of both parts, I get three to one. And what is three to one? I just write here. R1 to R2 equals three to one, or three axis to one x. I use scaling factor. So this is three x, and this is x. So OQ equals three x plus x. which is 4x, and this is 12. You can find x and plug into the, the multiply by 3, or you can make proportion, whatever you like. Divide by 4, x equal to 3. What is x? x is r2. How to find uh, r1? Plug in here x, and the result will be 9. So our result is nine. You can do different way. You can use pi r square to and another pi r square, but this is a little bit fast. You use a similar if you remember for solids. If two solids are similar, then the ratio of the volumes equals to cube of linear ratio. In one line, you solve many problems. Any questions so far, students? No questions. Okay, next is, let me do, four twenty-two. Diana, please, Diana K. The kinetic energy of an object is calculated by the following formula. Kinetic energy is equal to one half of mass times velocity squared, where kinetic kinetic energy is the, well, where Ke is the kinetic energy, m is the mass, and v is the velocity. If the mass of the object is a constant, which of the following graphs best represents the possible relationship between the kinetic energy and the velocity of the object? Thank you. So kinetic energy equals one over two m v to the second. We did it many times with you, right? And they give a graph. The graph is in ordinates we have kinetic energy and abscess we have velocity. What is more convenient students for you? This one, even though this is the same, or y and x? Diana, what is more convenient for you? The first or the second? First. Usually we have, we always use the second one more convenient because for instance, I give example, y equals to mx plus b line, y equals to ax plus b parabola, etc. So this is general for any lines and this is specific for only kinetic energy. If you make this analogy, and you see this is V is independent variable and K is dependent variable, like here. X is independent and Y is a result of application of these uh, manipulations, and this is dependent variable. I can make analogy, I take different, different color, for me, the same, like y equals one over two m. M is a constant, we said, so this sum constant, and v is x squared. Can you see this? Because if a constant divided by two is still constant, I don't care about the value of this constant. So you understand the other, right? What I did? I made analogy, which is more convenient for you because you study parabola and line for few semesters in your beautiful schools. And what graph of this line you have? 
what graph of this line? Ax square. Is this parabola, right? When x equals to zero, y equals to zero, and this is parabola. No, look at this and find parabola. If you look at this, they deliberately put different lines for you. Nobody cares. This only C look like this. C. So this equation of parabola. So we have to think abstract thinking. Don't think about specific formula. Think about class of formula. Behind the scene, this problem. Second degree parabola, third degree cubic parabola, first degree mx plus b line. Okay. For instance, x minus h to the second plus y minus k to the second equals to um, r to the second circle. So each line we study separately. 100% yes, no. Diana? Yes. Good. Who has question about this? So don't be confused if they give you this one and this one. Let me show what they do, how they confuse kids. They have the same trick. They give you this one, this one, this line not related at all, this one. So only this one, this y x square, because we did symmetrical. Remember, we did it's only right branch, right branch, y right branch, because you put to second power, you have you don't have negative energy in this case. This is parabola. Well, this for twenty two. Next, I cross it out. Nikita, it was your question 423, please. Nikita. So ratio has either black or blue pens in her pencil case. If the ratio of the numbers of the blue pens to the number of the black pens is one over five, R Rachel could have the following number of pens in her pencil case, except. Okay, thank you. Except they deliberately use black and blue because they start from the same letter. If they start, you have to denote it somehow different. So Four twenty-three. And they said blue, I will use blue, not just B, to black. Black. Okay. They said one to five. Soon when we have ratio, we already did today like this. Never use one to five without scaling factor. Why? Maybe it's 2 to 10. Maybe 1 million to 5 million. It's just ratio. But you don't know how many of these pens we have here. Then I use x. So based on this total equals 1x plus 5x equals to 6x. Well, let's analyze my result. Based on this, I know that all total must be multiple of six. Otherwise, it not be divisible by six. You can have part of this pen. Or what is it? Pens here, right? So look at this multiple choice. All numbers supposed to be answers, supposed to be multiple of six. What about A, 12? A, 12. It is multiple of six, yes. D eighteen multiple of six, yes. D multiple of thirty six is multiple of six, yes. And C thirty four is it multiple of six? No. So this is the correct answer because they ask you negation, except 
34 is not divisible by 6. Nikita, so far so good? Yes, Dr. Farb. Yes. Time for no questions? No questions. Um, Nikita, since you read very nicely, you ask me another question for 24. Read 24, please. Nikita. To find the surface area in square a meter of the half a rectangular solid as shown above. Thank you. Four twenty four. We have of half of rectangular solid. And then we have rectangular solid. Okay. I connect this and this. Okay, this and this. And cut out this one. We don't need this. This is how we can go solve. And provide dimensions. This is solid line. And this is four meters. Width is length. Uh, width is two meters. And height is three meters. This is height. Why the surface area? Well, step by step. I would name this front, this triangle, and back. So area front and back equals four times C divided by two, area one triangle, and multiply by two since we have front and back. So far so good. Next, area of bottom. I will not use B because B is related to back. So some specify four times two. This one. Area right. This one. Area right. Two times three. And finally, area top. This area top. This area bottom. Area right. Area front. Area back. This one defined. And just at home, you easy go through this. Okay, area top. This also rectangle. This is two. And you have to know this side. To do this, I put here A, B, C. And if this is three, this is four, this must be five, Pythagorean triples. Three, four, five. And this width is two. So area top is five times two. This length and this width. 
If you multiply as a map, you get the answer. So far, so good. Any questions? No questions. Okay, good, good. This is 24. Next, 25. What we have in 25? Well, in 25, I will refer to picture you have, to this bar graph. Theodore, what's your question? 25, read it, please. According to the graphs above, the total number of part-time employees is how many more than the total number of full-time employees at Oaktown High School? Okay, thank you. When you have graphs, the name is data interpretations. Read carefully all these footnotes, whatever you have, right? And uh, look at this. We have two graphs. One is pi diagram and the second bar graph. First of all, I don't have a uh, total amount of people. From uh, the second graph, where you have bar graph, so 25. I can easily find total amount of people. Step one. We have a look at this graph, 25 total. 25 plus the second, I believe, is like 45. Yes, it is 45. And the third bar is 50. This is 120. It's total number of employees, whatever. OK. Now, full-time employees, if you get this, Part-time is 60. And for full-time in a footnote is 40% of total. Full-time employees, 40% is 0.4 or 120, All right? You can go this way, full time. Not like this. You have to divide. Look at this, in footnote, they said, they give a graph and said full time is 40% of total employees. If uh, this is, 40%, so you have to divide to get amount of employees. This is full time. This is full time. Full time. And this is total. 120 divided by 0.4. If we multiply by 10 and by 10, it is one. Two zero zero by four is three hundred. Yes, this is correct. Because the second graph, look at this on the top. This is full times employee, and this full times is just forty percent of total. Now it's fine. So part time employee, part time. And part-time employee, if you look at this on the on the top, when pi diagram on the top, 60% of total. 0.6 of total is 180. And now they ask you to find difference between them. Delta means difference between what? Uh, part-time and full-time. So 180 minus 120, which is 60. 60. So far, so good, students. The next is 
I'm going to go through more three class question first. Okay. Uh, number 29. Number 29. Uh, Samuel, please. Uh, how many positive factors does the number 800, 875 have? Okay, thank you. This is also a classic we did many times with you. This is 429. And they ask you how many positive factors? 875. Let's go to the four, fourth grade and make prime factorization. This would be five, 175. Well, it's divisible by five as well. And 35 and five and seven. And you can represent this number like uh, five to the third power times seven to the first power. After that, we have a theorem. In order to find number of factors, not necessarily to study this and this and write all solutions that like you did in first grade, no way. Uh, number of positive factors factors. This what theorem, if you remember, we solve in few tests. All I can do without this curly braces. You take this three, there's a number of positive factors, right? It will be sure that exactly yes. Take this three, and you take this one, plus one and plus one. It would be four times two, which is eight. They don't ask you what number, what specific, they ask you total. And this is eight. So can you uh, tell me, I had similar problem in this test. Even this test, who tell me number? I wanna make commonalities, you know, the similar problems we have in different, I believe in this test. Here it is, uh, 413. Samuel, can you read it please for 13 as well? Uh, how many positive factors does the number 72 have? Thank you. 72. We have uh, 236. I will leave it for comparison. 218, 2933. And you can write it like represent this 2 to power 3 times 3 to power 2. How to solve this problem? Two group of parentheses. This is 3, this is 2, plus 1, plus 1. This is 4 times 3, which is 12. Keep in mind, in SAT, not only you're supposed to solve problem, but you have to solve it very fast. Right? And this was for 29 and 413. Let me just write down 429, similar. And here make a link. 429 to... Four thirteen. Good. Next, Adriel, 430, please, 430. The function fx equals 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 3 minus 4x to the power of 2 minus 3x plus 2 was graphed in the xy plane shown above. How many real solutions are there if fx equals 3x? 
Thank you. So let me try to depict this graph for 30. You have Cartesian coordinates. Okay. I have this one, this one, this one. Kind of like this. And they give you four not necessarily related to this, they give you this graph. This is f of x equals x to the fourth plus 3x to the third minus 4x to the second minus 3x plus 2. And I have seen some students wanted to solve this algebraically. No way. F of x equals to 3x. How to solve this problem? Like we did, you can solve it in a few seconds. I will take a different color and combine this with another graph. You know, when you have a y equals to x, it go it bisects the first and the third quadrant. The bigger coefficient slope, the steeper line, right? And pretend this line. I look at this picture. You have to make nice line here. This line is supposed to be a little bit steeper. Otherwise, I don't have enough size for this whiteboard. Steeper. Like this. And the x is pretty steep, not like this. It goes like this. If you make this line, you see two points of intersection, right? And the answer is two. Okay, good. Is four thirty. Cross it out. Four thirty two mark mark which one four thirty two okay a circle is tangent to two sides of a parallelogram ABCD as shown in the figure above if the circle has an area of twenty five pi what is the area of the parallelogram ABCD thank you nice reading. Then this circle, I do the parallelogram around, kind of like this. And this is point of tangencies. And this side equals to 15. And A of circle equals to 25. So A of circle equals pi s square equals to 25 pi 25 pi this is given if we divide by pi cancel out r square equals to 25 since you know radius is not negative you can ra radius equals to pi if i connect these lines it means if radius is five, a b, which is diameter, a b equals two radii, which is ten. So this is ten. Simultaneously, you know that if you have tangent to the circle, it's always perpendicular to point of tangency. This is ninety degrees. So our AB is the height of this parallelogram. And how to find area of parallelogram? Base times height. 
which is 15 times 10. Okay, this one. Let me see if I don't miss anything. Mark percent. Yes, no. Yep. Let me see if I don't skip any question on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I forget to answer my question here, but I, I'll explain after this. Well, it was 432. 433. Who did not read today too much? Probably. David, can you read 433? David? Kirill, 433, please. 433. Next one. In a toy yeah. factory, in a toy factory production line, every nine, ninth toy has their electronic parts checked, and every twelfth toy will have their safety features checked. In the first 180 toys, what is the probability that a toy will have both its electronic parts and safety features checked? Thank you. This is typical LCM problem. Look at this. 433. What we know? Every ninth toy has electronic parts. Check. Ninth. Check. Electronics. Every 12th, safety features. Safety features. So, not smart way to make a drawing. 9, 12, and see where find the pattern. Why? We know how to find pattern. What is 9? Nine is three by three. What is twelve? Twelve is three by four by two. You can square LCM. And this three to the second is three times two to the second. Okay, for LCM you take the biggest power. You can do it mentally actually. Mental, you know this 36, but anyway, is 3 to the second times 2 to the second, which is 36. So every 36 will be checked for electronics and safety issue. Every 36. Okay. And in the first 180 toys, what the probability the toy will have both electronic parts and safety feature checked? Mm -hmm. So if you divide, there are two ways. Actually, this is also to be sure because 180 is divisible by 36. If you divide 180 by 36, you will find the only five these toys they will check for uh, electronics and safety issue five and how many there's your probability they both check is five over 180 which is one over 36. Okay, so far. Check. Okay, this is okay. Any question about 433?
435 students. Adriel, please. In the figure above, point O is the center of the circle. Line segments P, Q, and P, R are tangent to the circle at points Q and R, respectively, and the segments intersect at point P as shown. If the radius of the circle is 5 and the length of PQ is 5 radical 3, what is the area of minor sector RQ? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Thank you. Nice reading. First of all, make a picture. We have a circle. And from this point, you make a tangent. And from this point, you make a tangent. And this O, R, R is not the radius, just point. Q is a point, and P. This is P. What else? If PQ equals to 5 square root of 3, this is given, and the radius is 5. Okay. Let me connect this and this. First of all, you know the theorem. If we have point beyond the circle and we make two tangents, this and from this point to point of tangency are the same. This is five square root of three. You can easily prove these two triangles are what? Congruent. Why? The same angle, 90 degrees perpendicular, property of perpendicularity. The same radius and the same common size, uh, some common side. They congruent. From another side, this is triangle is. Um, OQP is right triangle. Triangle OQP is right. And this angle X, I don't know, X. You can write tangent of angle X, tangent X. Opposite to adjacent. 5 square root of 3 to 5. Cancel all the square root of 3. You, can, you have scientific calculator. You can press on this 2 and tangent to negative 1, or from our tables we study our tangent. So for which angle tangent equals square root of 3? Well, even without calculator, x equal to 60 degrees. And this example is 60, because these two triangles are the same. It means angle O Q O R Q O R 60 times 2, which is 120 degrees. And you have to find area of this sector. Well, Area of circle, pi r square, pi, this radius, or 25 pi. And this related to 360 degrees. And we have sector 120 degrees. This is 120 degrees. Pretend the slice of pizza. I have no idea. From cross multiplication, I can easily find x. In terms of pi, they ask. You. No, they ask you to multiply. Okay, multiply. You can e e even mentally you see this is three times smaller than this one. Okay. Who understand this hundred percent this problem? Nikita. 
Okay, focus questions. No questions. It was 25. Okay, uh, 35, sorry. Okay, 36, Mark. In the equation above, A and B are two real numbers. What is the value of A plus 2B? Thank you. For 36, what we have here? I believe 2 minus I multiplied by 3 plus 2I. And there will be A, B, two real numbers equals to a plus b i and a b belongs to real numbers what is a plus to b well use distributive multiply by two first i do very slowly six plus 4i minus 3i minus 2i squared even my i squared equals to negative 1 equals from bilateral terms 6 plus i minus minus plus 2 you get 8 plus y right Eight plus i. Well, if you write eight plus one i, which is the same, a equals a plus b i. Two compass uh, numbers are equals if separately equal their real parts and imaginary parts. So since that a equals to eight and b equals to one. And there's go a plus 2b or not to b is equal 8 plus 2 times 1, which is 10. So far, so good again. Distributive keep in mind i square equals to negative 1. Mm -hmm. 38, Diana. Find the radius of the circle given by the equation x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y equals 20. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, 438. We have, what is it? x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y equals to 20 if I wrote correctly to so small letters minus 5 plus 2y equals to 20. What is our goal? Equation of circle x minus h to the second plus y minus k to the second equals to r to the second. Unscramble and complete the squares. Let me do this. X squared minus 4x plus 4 and minus 4. Why? I need two formulas. A minus B to the second equals A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Or when you have plus, it will be plus. Okay, and this one. I can tell it's x minus 2 to the second. Plus y squared plus 2y plus 1 and minus 1. And this one is y plus 1 to the second. E equals to 2. Combine like terms, and what we'll have? Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. 
and add plus five and plus five to save time and space. What do we get? X x minus two to the second plus y plus one to the second equals to twenty five. If I line up this equation from circle x minus h to the second plus y minus k to the second equals to r square, you can easily see that r square equals to 25. r square equals to 25. If you take square root of both parts and it's not, not, not negative, this is plus 5. So unscramble and complete the squares. And some student wrote here about problem. I, I skip. I agree with you. Let me come back. I promise to return. And look at this. If I skip something, you can ask me. Problem not, not complicated. Let me find this problem. Okay. Let me find. Uh, four, three. Who will read this? Four, three. Theodore, please. Four, three. For tip nineteen. Yes, four, three. In this, uh, in this test. Section four, number three. If 50 pounds of force can stretch a spring five inches, how many inches will the spring be stretched by a force of 70 pounds? Assume the force needed to stretch the spring varies directly with the stretch distance. Okay, thank you. This is easy problem. There's everything here. This is uh, four three. And pretend you have a spring. This is a wall, and you apply force. Okay, and this point A, after application of this force, is stretching. And next position would be D. And we have relationship between force and the displacement. Since we have this proportional relationship, right? You can make easier proportion. What we have when the force is 50 uh, pounds, it is stretching five inches. When 70 pounds is x inches. From here, you can easily find x. But behind of this problem is very interesting problem. Anybody knows uh, name of Genius, his name was Robert Hook. Robert Hook, H O O K. Who knows this name? He was protege and he was polymath. He created a special kind of microscope and found different microbes before in water, before even the living book, 30, 30 years before. And he studies transfer materials. He studied different materials under his microscope. And he studied that you have any material, even iron, and you want to stretch. If some of you go engineering, you study in strength of material, special uh, hook law. And uh, let's say if you if you take pretend this is piece of metal. Okay, you stretch it, and this sigma stretch, and this displacement delta, or well, let's say x. The graph goes like this, after the this, and goes like this. In some interval in the beginning, the more force you apply, the bigger it stretch and the bigger the stresses of this. He was so surprised. At that time, people, like in this time also as well, 
people stole ideas. But how pretend you live in a 17th century? It's uh, about Da Vinci time, right? Not Da Vinci, but 1,360 pretend. How you can protect your idea to say this is me, Dr. Robert Hooke created this law. He was very smart. And he, uh, in Latin, he wrote this sentence. The sentence was, the more you stretch, the more it's expanded, right? Kind of like this in Latin. And after that, he scrambled words <coughs> and published in magazine, in magazine, in famous magazine in England. It was like anagrams, and nobody knew what is it. It was like abracadabra. In few years, when few years passed, he said, well, I discovered this law in Latin, I even wrote for you this expression, ut tensio civis in Latin. In English is as the expression, so the force. Bigger force, bigger expansion. So behind this of this line is great hook law. I can give you uh, this Robert, you can go. This he discovered this in 1660. This hook law. And this part of this in your SAT. You see beauty of SAT. SAT not only test. It's open your window to great knowledge in any field. So tell me if I skip any question, you still need help. I will explain you. Could if, you explain? Yes. Oh, could you explain four ten? Four ten, right? Yeah. Find it and just read it out loud, please. Let the function f be defined by f of x is equal to x squared plus 27. If f, f of 3y is equal to f of y, f is equal to 3f of y, what is the one possible value of y? Okay, thank you. In quarter, they give you a function. The function looks like this, f of x equals x squared plus 27. And they said f of, uh, what is it, 3y equals to 3f of y. What the one possible value of y? So usually you have to decode it. For instance, I take this, select control C, control D over there, line up, F of 3Y. Now X equal to 3Y. Plug in 3Y to the second plus 27, which is 9Y to the second plus 27 and this one is 9y to the second plus 27. Now f of y the same line up equals instead of xy you have y squared plus 27 and plug into the right part. 3y squared plus 27. Or distributive property. Uh, use the space 9y to the second plus 27 equals 3y squared plus uh, 81. Minus 3y squared and minus 3y squared minus 27 and minus 27. 
Okay. I have six y squared. Cancel out, cancel out. E equals when you subtract this, what do you get? 34. Divide by six both parts. E equals to nine. So y equals to plus minus square root of uh, nine plus minus c. Okay. And what is one possible value? Who like plus three and who like negative three? Let's what? Who like both? Who choose uh, plus three? Raise your hand. Who would choose negative three? Who would choose hands down? Who would choose both? I just check it. Not, uh, not all of you careful enough, students. In multiple choice, we have only negative three. That's it. So both of them fine. But look what we have in multiple choice. In multiple choice, we have negative three. So the answer is negative three. But practically, generally speaking, both of this fine. Okay, Diana, did you answer your question? Yes. You have some question from uh, another package. Let me find. Maybe no, I know we are out of time, but let me do this. Be sure to understand 100%. Package 20, number three, Samuel, please. Uh, to make orange dye, five parts of red dye are mixed with three parts of yellow dye. To make a green dye, four parts of blue dye are mixed with two parts of yellow dye. If equal amounts of green and orange dye are mixed, what fraction of the new mixture is yellow dye? Thank you. Also typical question. And this is number three. And what we have? Five parts of red dye. To get orange recipe, we have to have five red. And three yellow, three parts. To get green, combination is you're supposed to take four blue, with two yellow. Equal amount of green and orange dye are mixed. Equal amount of green and orange. What fraction of you make sure is yellow dye? So how many parts we have here? We have eight parts overall. And how many parts we have here? Six parts. And they said equal amount equal. What is LCM for eight and for six? 24. In order to have mix this, I will multiply this by three and this by four because LCM of eight and six equals to 24. After multiplication by three, I will get, I will write here. 15 red to make the same line to save space and time. Uh, plus nine yellow. And this 16 blue plus eight yellow. And the question is, what fraction of you make sure is yellow dye? And no, this is 24 parts. This is 24 parts. <clears throat> and this is 24 parts, this arrow. 
if you add them up, because why you add them up? Because you mix. If you mix yellow, you get what is it? 17 part of yellow out of uh, 48 parts of a row. So yellow to total would be 17 over 48. Okay. They give you everything. They say the same, the same up. The same amount of parts, so yes, make the same amount of parts after that. Make comparison to understand this hundred percent up to this point. Any more questions, students, for your homework? Any questions? Okay. Students, if I miss any question over there, tell me from any of these three packages. If you have questions, you don't have questions, right? Good. So today, not only we went through SAT, but also you get some story about Robert Hooke, Christian Doppler, all this uh, Bernoulli, when I told you about three, you know this, uh, it was six brothers, Bernoulli. They have great impact on math. Yehan, Daniel, etc. You can read about all these people on the internet. And they in foundation of calculus, by the way. Okay, and special Bernoulli equation, etc., etc. My request, look on SAT, is a journey in science and math. Okay, this all stuff that we study is very related with real life. If you don't have any questions, students, let me ask you about just a sec. Ask manager about schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <clears throat> Excellent. So let me give you homework. I will give you homework. What is good, I see your result going up, but not so fast as expected. Who thinks that any problem I explained today was difficult? Any problem? Tell me any problem you feel that it was really a difficult problem. And you don't have enough knowledge to solve it. There is no such problem, right? So this is task we did today, page 384. You're supposed to redo. Keep 19 and 20. Okay, you get another test. I believe four. And probably you get two tips. Preliminary 21, 22. Crucial if you redo everything. If you have a chance, go back and redo what we did here. Okay, and discuss with your parents about possibility uh, to join a program which helps you to, to choose a college with the best fit for specifically for you. And let us know to manager. If you don't have any questions, you have a nice weekend. Be strong, be well. Enjoy math. Bye. Bye, students. Have a good day. Bye, Dr. Barber. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.